The topic of this video is determining the domain and range of a graph. Let's look at a problem. All right, so it appears we have a parabola that has fallen over, and we want to find the domain and the range of this particular graph. So something that I'd like to point out right from the beginning is this is not a function. It fails the vertical line test, so this is just a relation. We're finding the domain and range of this relation. Uh, the second thing that I'd like to point out is uh, when you see something like this uh, in a software package, it's possible that these little arrow symbols will not be there. Um, the reason why is because if it's generated by a computer, uh, a computer has a very, very difficult time drawing arrows. Uh, a human with eyes and a brain can do that very, very easily. Far more difficult to program a computer to do so. So if a software platform that you're using gives you a picture that looks like this, and there's no arrows here, then one of the things that you need to decide is, should there be arrows? And for this graph, the answer is yes. Um, the only reason uh, why we are stopping here is because we ran out of room. We ran out of room on the graph. So uh, the lesson here is very simple. When your line or your curve reaches the outer edges of the graph, if there is not a closed dot, you are to assume there is an arrow. at the boundary. Okay, so what that means is when we see something like this in a software package, it is our responsibility to know that there should be an arrowhead here and here and that this graph continues. Okay, with this in mind, we are now ready to find our domain and our range. We've done a couple of problems now, so I'm going to get right to the short version. Here we go. Domain. We want the point furthest to the left, which would be this one, or this one, they're tied. And we want the point furthest to the right, which would be this one. We want to try and connect a path from the leftmost point to the rightmost point by moving along the line or curve without picking up our marker. Can we do that? The answer is yes. Therefore, we can write our domain by simply stating the x-coordinate of the leftmost point, which would be negative infinity, and the x-coordinate of the rightmost point, which would be 2, and writing that as an interval. So our domain goes from negative infinity all the way to 2. Infinity and negative infinity always get the parenthesis symbol. And in this case, because we do have a point on our graph with an x-coordinate of 2, we must include 2 in the domain and therefore use a bracket. If I were to have used the bottom wing of this graph, I would have gotten the exact same result because I would still be going from negative infinity all the way to positive 2. All right, now it's time to turn our attention to the range. Well, if domain measures left to right, then range needs to measure down to up. So what point on this graph is farthest down, meaning it's closest to this little metal strip down here? Well, that would be this point right here where the arrow is located. And which point is furthest up, closest to this metal strip? Well, that would be this point right here where the arrow is located. Can we trace a path from the lowest point to the highest point by moving along our line or curve without picking up our marker? The answer is yes which means all y values from the lowest to the highest are represented in the range. So this, this is a little tricky to describe. I'm gonna spend a moment on this. I'm gonna go slowly through this part, okay? This arrow is pointing in two directions, two directions. It's pointing left and it's also pointing down. But think about it, left and down. Which one of those do we care about for range? range measures up and down. So we don't care about the left, we only care about the down. So this part of the graph is pointing down forever, and so from a range perspective, that would be negative infinity. How about this part of the graph? This part of the graph is pointing left and up. Left 
and up. Now it's pointing more left than it is up, but don't let that deceive you. We don't care about the left. We're measuring range. Range is up and down. So left and up, all we care about is the up. It's going up forever. So this right here is positive infinity for the range. It was negative infinity for domain, but it's positive infinity for the range. One arrow can represent two different things, two different flavors of infinity, depending on whether you're measuring domain, which is left and right, or range, which is up and down. So this right here represents positive infinity. And since we have all the values in between, the range of this graph goes from negative infinity to positive infinity.